In this video, I will be breaking down whether the CEO warehouse crates business is really worth doing as a means to make money. I will be explaining the pros and cons, the best ways to complete the missions and backing it up with cold hard facts and maths. So without further ado, let's get to it. One of the main reasons many people think the crates business is a good way to make money is because of some virgin who became popular by getting clueless young children to source his crates for him and then selling them. Hello YouTube, how's it going? It's the professional here. Sure, the money made looks impressive, but is it really worth the time and effort? First off, you need to buy a warehouse. You want to buy the large warehouse and forget the others as you want to stock up as much as possible before selling. I suggest either the Darnell Brothers warehouse the logistics depot, both in La Mesa, or the wholesale furniture at Cypress Flats, starting at just over $2 million and in an easy to reach location. I actually have two warehouses and I'll explain why later in the video. You'll also have the option to upgrade three selling vehicles, which could be as much as another $1.25 million. Regardless of doing these missions solo or not, always buy the three crates for $18,000. That's $6,000 per crate, but you're saving so much time as many missions will involve just one vehicle to deliver. Occasionally, you'll get crate drops, which means going back and forth for each crate. These missions are incredibly tedious and boring. Get to a van, drive it back, get to some crates, fly them back, not fun at all. But the main drawback here is that you're putting money down up front without initially taking anything back. Getting griefed and your stock destroyed means $18,000 straight down the drain. Filling up a full 111 crate warehouse will cost you $666,000, all before you see a penny of that back. So straight away you're going to spend a lot of money before earning anything. The best vehicles used for all of these is of course the Impressor Mark II. If you don't have one, well, buy one. If not, you will need something like a buzzer. On average, doing these missions solo would take approximately 5 minutes each. I suggest calling in your terabyte and parking it right outside one of your warehouses as you can start each mission directly from the central control hub, saving you time flying all the way back to your CEO office after each mission. There is a 5 minute cooldown once you have completed a mission. Use this time to either switch back and forth between doing yours and a friend's crates, or if you can afford it, source crates for your second warehouse. If you're going to splash out on a second warehouse, bear in mind that you'll now be paying over $1.3 million before you make any money back. If every mission will take on average 5 minutes to complete, and if you're getting the free crates each time, that will total 37 missions to fill a large 111 crate warehouse. With the 5 minute cooldown, you're looking at 10 minutes in real time for each free crate. It will then take you 370 minutes, or 6 hours and 10 minutes to fill it up, or the same time for both warehouses. As mentioned before, the missions are extremely dull and suck the life out of any enjoyment of the game. You also have the opportunity to collect a special item after a phone call from your assistant. These special items will sell for just over $100,000. But overall, are the crates worth it money-wise? I sold my two warehouses back-to-back -back during a double money week. One sold for $4.6 million and only took 5 minutes to complete, driving three trucks in the lobby with only 4 people in it. The second warehouse sale involved flying some very slow planes across the map, which were easy targets for griefers. Luckily, along with two other friends, we landed the planes, killed some enemies, and completed the sale in another 5 minutes, making $5.5 million in a pretty full lobby. That's just over $10 million for both sales. I then need to deduct my $1.3 million I spent on sourcing the crates, and that's a profit of $8.7 million. But remember, this was during the double money week. Selling those two warehouses normally would make half of that at around $5 million, or $2.5 million per warehouse. That means you would be spending over 6 hours of grinding horrible missions after spending $666,000 to only make back $1.8 million. That's equivalent to just over $300,000 per hour of grinding, or just over $600,000 if you own two warehouses. You can make up to 5 times that amount from doing a Keo Perico heist in 30 minutes, and with zero risk of losing any money. It's actually taken me about 4 weeks to make this video as I was so drained and bored from doing the sourcing missions even though I had a friend or two to help out that I just couldn't bear it any longer. I finally came back to source the last 20 crates when it was double money week. If you really do insist on doing the crates, my advice would be to source a few now and then in between other activities like the Keo Perico cooldown 
and build up your warehouse over time. Then sit on it and wait for the double money events. But these would only happen about twice a year. Buy the warehouses during discount weeks and save yourself a million. If you're on PlayStation, you can change your internet settings so you have a solo public lobby. To do this, change your MTU to 800. To summarize, are the CEO crates worth it? Mm, no. The source emissions are horrid and you risk losing money from griefers, meaning potentially many hours of work down the drain. The payback for labour is nowhere near good enough to warrant doing these on a consistent basis. You're also at risk from getting your warehouse raided and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in a flash. So as I said, if you really want to do the crates, only do them sporadically and wait for double money weeks. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats Down and I'll see you in the next one.